Is the bullpup shotgun a great idea that's been a long time coming or just a gimmick? Maybe somewhere in between. Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and that is what I've been exploring the last couple of weeks. I still don't have a solid answer, but I do have a few thoughts about bullpup shotguns that I wanna to share today. The idea of the bullpup style shotgun is not new. There have been a few attempts going back to at least the 1980s, but it's only been about 10 years since Caltech first released the KSG, which is really the first commercially successful bullpup shotgun. Several other companies have followed Caltech into the bullpup shotgun market, and now we have more than a dozen options to choose from. Now, most of those are from somewhat obscure or less well-known gun makers, uh, but there is the exception of Smith & Wesson. They released the M&P 12 earlier this year. Most bullpup shotguns are designed with self-defense in mind for defense inside a home. The length of a conventional shotgun is often considered one of its biggest drawbacks. The primary purpose of a bullpup design is to make the gun shorter without sacrificing barrel length. Both of these shotguns have 18 and a half inch barrels, but with the action located behind the trigger, the bullpup is a full foot shorter overall. This kel KS7 is seven inches shorter than my registered short barrel Remington 870, 11 inches shorter than my beloved Beretta 1301 Tactical. It has the same overall length as a Mossberg Shockwave, and if you actually aim the shockwave with the uh, cheek weld technique, it sticks out even a couple inches more than the bullpup. So the length advantage of the bullpup is really unmatched in the shotgun world. The other big feature that has drawn shooters to the KSG specifically is the dual magazine tubes. Each tube can hold seven two and three quarter inch shells plus one in the chamber for a total capacity of 15 rounds. kel is actually not the pioneer of this concept. In the 1990s, the Neosted 2000 bullpup shotgun from South Africa also had dual magazine tubes. Internally, the two guns are nothing alike, but it is interesting to see kel bring back that feature. And they're not the only ones to do that. Modern competitors to the KSG, like the UTS-15 and the MNP-12, utilize dual magazine tube designs as well. The standard manufacturing DP-12 has two tubes and two barrels. And then there's the uh, Tavor TS-12 semi-auto bullpup, which has three five-shot tubes. Also, within the last couple of years, we've started seeing a ton of different shotguns imported from Turkey, including several semi-auto and pump-action bullpup shotguns that feed from detachable box magazines. Only 10 years ago, we had a defensive shotgun market that was completely dominated by conventional designs that were essentially modified sporting shotguns. Many of those designs were even several decades old. And now today we've got a variety of new options, ultra compact shotguns with twice the ammo capacity of the old models, guns that were designed from the ground up for the mission of personal protection. As a fan of shotguns, I've gotta say, it's really exciting to finally see some genuine attempts at innovation. But having said that, I am not quite ready to jump on the bullpup bandwagon just yet. The benefits come with some trade-offs. For the models with the multiple mag tubes, the big trade-off seems to be mechanical complexity. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they are inherently less reliable, but there are more potential points of failure, both mechanical failure and operator error. The user has to learn a few extra steps to keep those guns running. The loading process is more complicated, and some of the designs require the user to manually switch tubes when the first one runs empty. Now, I don't know if any of that's a deal breaker. It kind of depends on how much you value extra ammo capacity in a defensive shotgun. Personally, I don't really consider it a high priority. A single round of buckshot is generally all it takes to provoke an immediate change of behavior in a violent threat. Occasionally it takes two if you're really unlucky. I can't fault anyone for wanting greater ammo capacity than what you get from a standard five to seven shot tube. Modern pistols and rifles have kind of trained us to expect double digit capacity. But with a shotgun, 
I'm okay with a lot less than that. That's one of the reasons I decided to start my bullpup shotgun experiment with the kel KS7. This is essentially the single tube version of the KSG, so it's got a seven plus one capacity. It's also a full pound lighter than the KSG and costs about a third less with an MSRP of 580 bucks. Another feature that drew me to the KS7 is the built-in hand stop on the forend. This helps keep your hand from slipping off and in front of the muzzle. The KSG and most of the other pump action bullpups instead have the option to add a vertical foregrip in order to mitigate that issue. I would much to prefer to use a standard horizontal grip on the forend, and the KS7 lets me do that while still providing some protection from self-amputation. Like we've come to expect from kel the KS7 has some quirks in its design and execution. For instance, the crossbolt safety works in the opposite direction of every other crossbolt safety I've used. So I'm not gonna cover every little issue I've had with this gun. I did not set out to specifically review the KS7. My goal for now is just to learn what I can about the viability of bullpup shotguns in general. So let's go back to the issue of trade-offs. I'm not thrilled with the trade-offs necessary to get extra ammo capacity, but what compromises might be necessary to get the shorter length? Are there some shortcomings inherent to the bullpup configuration itself. On my very first range trip with the KS7, the only thing I really learned is that this gun has absolutely brutal recoil. With my Beretta or my 870, I can shoot 600 rounds in a weekend and my shoulder always feels just fine at the end of it. I got through about half a box of shells with the KS7 and I was done for the day. Part of that is because this is just a lightweight shotgun. It weighs 5.9 pounds unloaded but I've shot other pump actions that didn't weigh a whole lot more than about six pounds and they were not quite as unpleasant to shoot. I think there's some other stuff going on here with the ergonomics. The buttstock has a small surface area so the felt recoil is more concentrated. The comb of the stock is in line with the barrel and that makes it difficult to get a cheek weld and keep the stock off my collarbone. So that's why I replaced the original uh, carrying handle iron sight with a Picatinny rail and this really tall 1.93 inch optic mount. I wouldn't say the gun is fun to shoot now, but it's definitely a lot more tolerable. I'm not sure if recoil is quite as much of an issue with other bullpup designs, but they do all have stocks that are in line with the barrel. That means just like with an AR-15, the ideal height for the optic is an important detail to figure out and it might vary from person to person. It's also worth pointing out that there is not really any way to shorten the length of pull with a bullpup. Now, the length of pull on this one is only 13 inches, so that's not bad, but shortening the length of pull is something we can normally do with a conventional shotgun, and it can often dramatically help with recoil management. It's not really an option with these guns. Another issue is access to the action. Most but not all bull pups eject from the bottom behind the pistol grip. That's your only access to the chamber or the mag tube. So if you wanna do a chamber check, a clear malfunction or load the chamber or the mag tube, you pretty much have to flip the gun upside down. Now with a little practice, I got okay at reloading the KS7. I ran the reload stage of the shotgun skills test that I posted a few months ago. I can usually do that stage in a little over eight seconds with my other shotguns. With the KS7, I managed 8.8, .8, which is a whole lot better than I was expecting. I stuck some Velcro tape to the right side of the stock slash receiver and attached a Van Comp shell card, and that setup has worked out pretty well. So the trend here so far is that a lot of the challenges of using a bullpup are not necessarily insurmountable. They're just weird. They take a little work to overcome, by figuring out some new techniques or tweaking how the gun is set up. Another one of those challenges I ran into with the KS7 is cycling the action. I've encountered all kinds of feeding issues, but usually just when I'm trying to run the action quickly. On the KS7, my support hand is about four inches closer to the trigger guard than it is with a Remington or a Mossberg pump. Um, it's also not an especially smooth action, so it just kind of feels awkward. It feels different than what I'm used to. If I try to run the KS7 as fast as I run my 870, I get failures to feed, I get double feeds, live rounds get dumped on the ground, 
that could just be Keltec being Keltec, or it could be all my fault and it's just operator error. Either way, it tends to run fine if I go a little slower. In any case, it turns out that having past experience with pump action shotguns is not always a good thing with the KS7. It's a lot of stuff to relearn. And even when I try to look at this through the eyes of a novice, it seems like a bullpup design would have a steeper learning curve than a conventional shotgun, but I have to admit that I've got some bias there. Uh, is all of that worth the advantage of having a much shorter gun? Using a long gun inside and around furniture and doorways and that kind of thing is always a pain, but as we've discussed here many times before, in case of an actual home invasion, it's generally a good idea to just stay put and wait for them to come to you rather than trying to be a one-man SWAT team. If you're bunkered in place, a conventional 18-inch shotgun is probably not a major disadvantage versus something like this. But you might have kids in the house that you've got to get to, depending on how your house is laid out. You might even have some tight spaces to work around, even if you never leave your bedroom. So the utility of a shorter shotgun is really based on the situation, the environment, and the ability of the user. If we need to drastically shorten a conventional shotgun just temporarily while we move through a doorway or something like that, we can use the short stocking technique that I've talked about before or an under the armpit kind of technique. Short stocking with a 14 inch 870 gives me a profile that's as short as shouldering the KS7, but that comes at the expense of reduced recoil control and reduced accuracy beyond a few feet. So despite the major length advantage, I still don't like the compromises I would have to make to become a dedicated KS7 user. So if I keep this project going, my next step would be to try a different bullpup shotgun, probably a semi-auto, but I'm open to other ideas. If you guys would like me to continue to explore the potential of bullpup shotguns, let me know in the comments. Depending on the response, I might try to tackle that in the first half of next year. For now, if you found that helpful and you want to show us your support, be sure to buy some ammo with lightning fast shipping from us at LuckyGunner.com.